Hi, I'm Anna Us, and uh, this is SEO in 2024. Anna, what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? So my number one tip is take full advantage of internal links and build a full, complete internal linking strategy. Okay, sounds complicated. Uh, <laughs> how, how often uh, do you have to, I guess, hone your internal link strategy? I think it is important to create internal link strategy once, build a framework, and then constantly refresh it. There are also a few elements that can help you uh, incorporate that strategy, like sharing with your team, automating internal links, but the groundwork needs to be done once, and then you just need to continuously add to it. Okay, and you'd continuously add to it once a month or something like that? I'd say you need to add to it every time you launch uh, an important page that you want to rank. If you launch a page that targets a, a high priority business value keyword, you need to add it to the cheat sheet, to the system. And once you launch the page, you need to optimize internal links instantly if you want that page to be lifted up and serve. Great. Okay, so let's dive into the specifics of how you go about doing this. So initially, how important is it to have your target keyword phrase within each internal link? I think it is very important. And uh, this is a, a well-known uh, fact that anchor texts need to be descriptive. but Sometimes we forget that there can be two, three, or even four variations of the same keyword, and all of them are semantically relevant and equally important. So don't stop on just selecting one keyword. Select those four combinations and go an extra mile to introduce those variations in your internal linking strategy. Okay, and how far would you push this? So if you had a website that sold blue sofas. Um, would you rename the internal link to your homepage to the blue sofa shop instead of homepage? Yeah, I would link with a, an optimized anchor text as well to the homepage. I would use homepage where it is relevant for user experience in breadcrumbs, in navigation, but within the text and maybe even within the footer within the reach text on the footer, I would still link the optimized anchor text to the homepage. Okay, so you talk about footer there as well. Is, is that the, the best place to start to arrange your internal link strategy? Or do you get better value by having it within the body content? Both. I think both are very important. And I'm pretty sure that SEOs uh, share this problem or face this obstacle quite often that you can't link very important SEO-wise pages from the top navigation, but the footer element is actually your, yours and uh, SEO-owned asset to make those pages discoverable. So take full advantage of the footer. Make sure that footer is descriptive by adding a uh, rich text describing what your company does. It is both very relevant for the user who is landing on different pages of your site, but can always find that snippet of information about what the company does and why he is there. And also make sure that you structure the footer nicely. Group the pages. Make sure that it makes sense. Group your assets in a comprehensive way, but also don't be shy to link your SEO assets there because sometimes it's one of the only opportunities to get those assets discoverable from the high traffic pages. Is there a maximum number of internal links that you'd want to have on a page? I'm usually aiming at not exceeding 100, 150 links on the page in total, including all the footer links, nav links, body links, internal and external links. Okay. And I don't know why I ended up on this blue sofa example here, but let's stick with it here for a second. And um, so... If you had a category selling cushions for blue sofas, would okay. you change your footer links, your footer internal links, to uh, also incorporate the sublinks within that category? So your different types of cushions and talk, linking to individual pages within that subcategory? Or 
Is your footer navigation something that stays consistent across the whole site? Oh, so the footer stays consistent across the whole site. I'm not asking to change the footer on specific pages. It definitely should be consistent. But this is a great question. Do you include subsections or not? And I think the answer is it depends on how important it is for you. If, for example, you specialize on those specific dotted cushions and they're something you really want to rank for, because this is number one product, you need to rank for it, I would include it. Maybe I would think logically how to incorporate that category in the future that it makes sense not to have homepage or like blue sofas and then dotted cushions, then help center, et cetera, et cetera. But you can always logically structure it. You can put most popular products, most popular cushions or types of cushions. There is a range of ways you can approach this. But if it is important for you to rank for that keyword, you think that that will drive sales and this is business crucial keyword, I would do it. So how do you select the key pages or categories or anything on your site that um, you want to incorporate as part of your internal link strategy as part of your key pages. I mean, are these pages that have the potential of bringing in a lot of traffic, are bringing in a lot of traffic? Are these pages that aren't ranking that well yet, but you'd like to actually increase the the chances of them ranking well? Both. So in my experience, there are pages that are ranking number one, but I would still include them because the SERP is so competitive. You literally can't lose on any aspect of your SEO strategy. So I would still have that link there because it is number one and it is driving the business. But I would also include high business value keywords that are not ranking yet, but I know that it is core to the business and it is going to bring in sales. So it is a combination of both. But one thing I will tell is don't focus just on traffic. Whether it is a high volume keyword, or a low volume keyword, but you think it will drive enterprise sales, for example. Both of them need to be very business focused and business oriented. And did you also, as part of this strategy, decide on which links to incorporate within blog posts that you happen to be publishing? Yes, so this is what I call strategy. The strategy is about designing the footer, navigation, and links that are populated throughout the site Uh, in a templated manner. The second aspect is more creative uh, and requires a little bit more groundwork is creating the list of the top pages that drive traffic and conversions, creating few variations of keywords that are driving traffic to those pages. You can easily see this in Google Search Console, just clicking on the page that drives traffic and conversions and then seeing the top four keywords, obviously non-branded ones. And these will be your variations documenting everything, and then following through with it, sharing it with the team, constantly using it when you create new content, new pages. And you can also use this for automating your uh, internal link building strategy. Yeah, I was going to ask about automation, actually, just um, in in relation to that, because once you decide on which pages that you're going to link to, can you not just decide on which keyword phrases you want to use to link to them? And then when those keyword phrases are used within blog posts, just automatically generate links based upon that? Yes, absolutely. And you know how everybody's talking about AI? There are so many new softwares that are being developed that I am really excited about. For example, the software I'm using for automating uh, internal links on Webflow uh, helps to determine the levels of certainty you want to use for internal link optimization. I go for the highest level of certainty where I have manually created that cheat sheet, uploaded it, and the number one keyword that will be suggested for me is the one I have selected. And then other anchor tags that will be suggested are semantically relevant to that. But the high level of certainty means that I'm not just relying on Google Search Console. Because if you rely on Google Search Console, you might get recommendations of anchor tags that are internally competing with each other. And especially if your business focuses on one niche, not blue sofas. But uh, if, if your whole product is about one specific type of software, obviously that will be mentioned on multiple pages and that's where the confusion might start. For example, video creation 
can be linked to video creation guide, video creation feature, video creation help article, but you need to avoid that and you need to be very consistent that you link video creation to the page that you want to rank. Okay, great. And from what you were just saying there, from what I understood is that what you can do is you can get AI to, perhaps you'd feed it with some keywords initially that um, yes. told it what um, would be your ideal um, keywords to use. But if those keywords didn't exist on your new page, then the AI would review the text and perhaps came up, come up with a couple of other possibilities. And as long as if it was a certain percentage of a match, if it was only over 50% relevant yeah. to the, the keywords that you selected initially, then that, that link would be automatically builded, built. So I wouldn't recommend building links automatically without uh, manual approval. But the two awesome features that I saw recently include, first, fixing links in bulk. So you get a list, you have a page, you have an anchor text and where it can link to, and you just click tick and you can accept 100 links. But you, by hovering over those items, you can verify whether this is the right place, the right article, where you want to embed the link. And the second feature is that you can replace the text. So for example, I want to search for a keyword AI video editing, but there are only three anchor texts like this on the website. So I look for editing and I click replace editing with AI video editing and I can get 50 more internal links built just like that in a snap of a second. Understood. Okay, that's powerful. And are you able to share the AI software that you're talking about? Uh, I'm talking about Letter Drop. Letter Drop, okay. And is that available outside of Webflow as well? I think so. I think so. There are many plugins for WordPress that you can start with, but definitely worth looking into new emerging solutions because they can also build custom features for you. You can also request things and they are constantly evolving. So like, that's what I love about SEO, that you can always find new exciting things that just solve your daily problems and address them. Absolutely. And how do you measure the success of your internal link strategy? What, what, what metrics do you use? You know, it's hard to attribute SEO success to one specific thing that you did. But in my experience, I have conducted specific internal link optimization campaigns. And I saw increase in rankings for the keywords I optimized. I will not name the specific keywords, but in that case, I had exactly an example I have described before that one anchor text would link to several different pages and that would cause inconsistency for a highly competitive keyword with over 100,000 search volume. By fixing that and replacing the other anchor text and adding new internal links, optimizing the footer. We moved from position four to position two for that keyword, which we didn't do anything else with the page. There were no other changes. That, 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 that could double your traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just one experiment. I can't 100% tell you that that is tied to that, but clearly there is an impact. And that's how I measure it. I look at the rankings for the anchor text that they have optimized. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time on internal linking in 2024? Well, I think that first of all, everybody needs to spend time on internal linking regardless of what you're doing. But one thing to stop is going after irrelevant traffic and you might think that this is a super relevant traffic for you, but look at the SERP, analyze the search results and identify the intent. Don't uh, follow the recommendation of commercial, informative, etc. intent uh, identifiers from the tools because they can be generic. Look yourself, look at the pages that rank and drop things that you think won't bring value to your business and focus on the things that do convert and that brings pipeline. Anna Us is SEO lead at 
Synthesia, and you can find her over at AnnaOos.com. Anna, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Thank you, David. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at SEOin2024.com. <laughs>